That's right. You guys guessed it. It's MedMen. Because MedMen shares have reached a zero value, you guys. That's right. Former high-flying cannabis company MedMen Enterprises, MMNFF, continues to circle the drain as the company's stock price falls to zero. Green Market Report had previously written that the OTC had pushed MedMen stock down to a lower level where stock prices aren't publicly quoted. However, some light trading uh, light trading uh, continues in the stock. Some shareholders on the Reddit uh, Reddit board of Weedstock said that they attempted to sell shares and the trades did not go through. The Yahoo Finance trading activity showed that there was a volume of 24,139 shares with the high price of, that's right, you guys guessed it, one penny. The last trade of the company's shares on the Canadian Stock Exchange occurred on January 4th of 2024 with a high price of two Canadian cents. That's like one U.S. penny, you guys. MedMen just just recently managed to sell its Arizona assets to Mint and said it would get $14 million. That money could help uh, the company get up to date uh, on its on its filings, which have resulted in punishment from both trading exchanges. Um, and MedMen also said that it has sold some of its Nevada assets, but that deal hadn't received regulatory approval yet. And the company announced in December that it was selling MMOF Vegas Retail Incorporated and MMOF Vegas Retail Number no. Two Incorporated to a company called Retail Facilities Operations NV. LLC. Uh, let's see. Managed by Evayan Sahara and uh, the and the the looks to generate another ten million dollars. And Sahara is the co-founder and CEO of Brightroot, which is the parent company of Mint Cannabis. Potential owners, you ask. Well, however, it is a a drop in a huge bucket of liabilities for the company, and the company has a deficit of over four hundred million dollars and has been paying some account payables and liabilities with essentially worthless stock. Companies that have invested in the company are likely to uh, to to battle over the scraps that remain after the assets have been sold off, and companies like Tilray have invested in MedMen back in. In, in 2021, and Tilroy issued 9,817,061 shares valued at $117,804 to acquire 68% interest in Superhero Acquisition LP, uh, which purchased a senior secured convertible note issued by MedMen. Also, you also have Gotham Green has been a longtime partner of MedMen and has sunk millions into the company over the years, and the company is owed $1.3 million a quarter in interest payments, which it has been receiving in shares, meaning each quarter it owns a larger chunk of the equity in addition, in, in addition to the debt. MedMen uh, may be restructured from, from the dead or may be resurrected from the dead but there may be not much left to save they say well 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 what do you guys have to say about this medmen shares trading at a penny they've hit the bottom of the barrel and this is jason beck for the high at nine news what do y'all have to say about this so we go by stock now Right. You go by, you go by, <laughs> I no, mean, there's a difference between buying the dip and being a dork <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like that's like straight being a dip. We can all save Mad Men together now. <laughs> oh man, man. I mean, I'll tell you what. I'd buy some Mad Men shares if they're priced at zero pennies. What is saying? Just, Don't we have one of those little buttons for the soundtrack where it does one of those clown whistles like wah 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 wah? It's actually it's actually a trombone, Yaro. It's a trombone. Is it? Yeah, it's a trombone. Yeah. Yeah. I, wind instruments were never my thing, but I, you know, I mean, but I like the way Mandy gets that like like mm -hmm. the air trombone. So I think so. Shout out to Green Market Report and Deborah over there for all she does, keeping us current. To me, this isn't news because mm -hmm. we've known this was going to be. This was inevitable, uh, right? Uh, yeah, this has been a, the most likely outcome for going on five plus years. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's really just been watching that happen in slow motion. Very, very, very true. Very true. It's been a downhill thing for MedMen. Ever since they got that unicorn billion dollar valuation, it seems like they've just been on a steep decline ever since. I mean, it's hard to be the first big dog. I mean, and they really were. They really came out strong years ago. They they paved a lot of road 
for a lot of people, it's hard to be first. It's the most expensive to be first. You make the most mistakes when you're first. Mm -hmm. And when you come out as big and strong as they did from the get go, unfortunately, our industry is really good at being haters. Um, yeah, but I think there's more than that. It's the hubris, right? Like, personally, I've been up, I've been down. And I realized over time that life is like shoots and ladders. And when you make big paper, you start to believe your own your own ego, your own, you know, the, the, the voices in your head that say you're better than. And so I think looking back on this story, looking back on this founder journey, when they were up, I didn't see a level of humility that reflects maturity. And 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 I think it's important to remember we all get our 15 minutes of fame. Um, but it doesn't mean we're gonna stay the bee's knees. And these founders did certain things with the money that was indicative of irresponsible use of funds across a lot of scenarios. Mm -hmm. And so that may not be the reason why they fail, but it certainly is something that when we look back on what are the takeaways, one of the takeaways is treat all money like it matters. And even if you're the top dog, know that every dog is a dog and don't get too caught up in your own story. I mean, absolutely. But also, Look historically what happened from like 2017 on. There's been billions of dollars blown just haphazardly in this industry. It's one of the reasons why the legacy operators who do still exist today are still in existence. Maybe they didn't get a hold of that funding. Oh, look at my hand. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> mm. um, but they really didn't get the the same financial backing. They had to keep, you know, just scrapping it together and bootstrapping and doing what they were doing and plugging forward and just following instinctually what felt right, what has all, always felt right. And meanwhile, billions of dollars being dumped into this industry that nothing is here to show for it anymore. Mm -hmm. It's 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 um <sighs> It, I don't know. This year is the return to legacy. I'm calling it. Oh, Everybody, 2024. All these return. investors who put money in that lost their asses that are looking at all of us who are still standing. that have been doing this shit forever. Like our mm -hmm. industry, not to reference, not to like make a comparison to like, oh, they say cockroaches last forever, but they're just instinctually durable. And so are we. We so are saying, instinctually durable as an industry. Not legacy, cockroaches, you're saying the legacy operators are cockroaches is what you're telling me. They're legacy operators are, are as resilient as cockroaches is what you're telling me. Man. <laughs> We're going to make it is what I'm trying to say. It's a good thing the DCC doesn't carry around raid. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I mean, look, Mandy, if I'm going to go with your really uh, interesting Monday morning analogy, yeah, the survivors the are cockroaches. Yeah, no, it's, okay. it's okay. The survivors are cockroaches, and the where are they nows are dung beetles. Oh, God. Um, yeah, you know what? Dung beetle, but yeah. the point is, we're, we're needed. We, are, we do have the answers. We are the answer to this problem oh man you, you really sound, like, sound like some of those globalists like you guys are gonna just be eating bugs in 2024 but